To kickstart the marketing process, bands should try to give their mixtapes to as many music bloggers as possible so their music be more easily accessible. Bands should also try to make a fan page and even a blog. But most importantly, bands should network through social media. As we spend more time on our mobile devices, dating apps are allowing people to find love and companionship. In a matter of seconds, you could be matched with people who you might be interested in with apps such as Tender, Match.com, or Plenty of Fish. The interstate system expansion will provide the North Shore efficient travel for more than 85,000 commuters daily on I-12. There is the potential with this storm for flooding in neighborhoods in Metro New Orleans inside the levee protection system. It's that strong a storm. Hurricane Katrina ripped through southeast Louisiana, only leaving behind despair and wreckage. Structures once thought to be massive and solid were now mere remains of destruction. The I-10 Twin Span Bridge connecting New Orleans and Slidell was one of those structures demolished by the storm. The surge came and lifted the bridge panels up and just set them down in the water. It looked like uh, a line of dominoes that had just fallen. Fallen dominoes that had connected thousands to their homes for 40 years now lay in Lake Pontchartrain. The crackled frame was plastered over TVs everywhere, and the crippled bridge was a metaphor of residents' hearts during Katrina, broken. Right now I'm standing on one of the foundation pillars of the twin spans and the parts that weren't completely blown away into Lake Pontchartrain have been shifted seven to ten feet. It's hard to believe that this actually happened. Yeah, I remember seeing the helicopter video and you saw the huge pieces of bridge that were no longer there. But then to actually be on the ground, it was like a completely different world. It almost felt like you were on a movie scene. But this was no disaster movie only a horrific reality for the people connected by the twin spans. That to drive on I-10 and basically stop, to see these huge concrete pillars that weigh God knows how many tons that have either been slid off their foundation and are completely out of sync with the rest of the bridge or have been lifted off and are now at the bottom of Lake Pontchartrain, it was jaw-dropping to say the least. After the I-10 span plunged into Lake Pontchartrain, the state's Department of Transportation and Development decided the bridge's design had to change. It was too vulnerable. The bridge was rebuilt 20 feet higher and anchored to the roadway. The massive project stood complete in 2011. Um, but I am not the expert to answer, can it? I, I believe in my you know heart of hearts that it has been built properly and, uh, and will be able to take a punch from a storm of that magnitude. On August 1st, 2014, the bridge was officially named the Frank Davis Naturally Nolens Memorial Bridge, honoring former WWL TV chef Frank Davis, who fished near the bridge. That's Naturally Nolens. I'm Frank Davis with Channel 4 Eyewitness News. It's still the great unknown. Moving forward 10 years after Hurricane Katrina, the I 10 twin spans are stronger than ever towering high above Lake Pontchartrain and spreading its arms to link New Orleans with the local community. For Southeastern Times, I'm Brittany Robinson. many of your favorite artists rarely receive the recognition or exposure they deserve? One of the reasons may be they aren't marketing themselves as well as other artists. If a band wants to earn a living playing music, the band has to be unique, has to offer a product to a fan base, something the fan base wants. The brand has to be promoted, and that's where marketing comes in. To kickstart the marketing process, bands should try to give their mixtapes to as many music bloggers as possible so their music be more easily accessible. Bands should also try to make a fan page and even a blog. But most importantly, bands should network through social media. For promoting the gig, well, I uh, always go to social media first uh, because that seems to be the biggest venue. 
The thing about a band, you have to be really good, you have to have a good sound, you have to have songs people are going to like. Focusing on the music is inspiring. However, many bands struggle with the business side of music, making sales, getting gigs, and increasing their fan base. Well, when we first uh, started to tackle this, it, it, it felt kind of overwhelming because of all the different uh, variables attached to it. Marketing over the internet, such as using Facebook, what that does for artists, it allows them to create a personal experience with the fan base, get the fan base engaged and involved in what the band's about and in the, van, in the band's growth and in the band's successes. The Rooftop Junkies are a local New Orleans rock band composed of vocalist DJ Regis, bassist Travis DeRoche, guitarist Jeremy Galloway, and drummer John Palmer. I've been playing the drums for a while and you know in the old days it was putting up flyers everywhere and word of mouth but now it's it's all about social media and trying to have a good recording product so you can put it out there on social media and start pointing people to it. Yeah I think social media really definitely does play a major factor in modern music be it promotion uh, be it distribution even. Uh, but social media is that's the king. Twitter, Instagram, uh, our band's Facebook page. As we progress we, we get it gets a little, we get more used to it and, start, and we find out also that there are other things that can help enhance the uh, whole process also. Marketing in theory is simple, but musicians can find that there's a certain strategy to it. Bands need to stay attuned to uh, what platforms are available to them and which ones their fans utilize the most. The strategy is, is making sure those engagement numbers stay high. You want people engaging with your post. You want them sharing and you want them making comments. That shows and demonstrates in your reports that you get that they're engaged because your post caused them to do something, to talk about something. Use everything that's available to you on the business side these days. If you effectively use those and you're very strategic and um, kind of know what you're doing, you can make a living doing this. For Southeastern Times, I'm Brittany Robinson. Dating, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is to do an activity with someone you might have a romantic relationship with. Today, dating takes on a new meaning from the dictionary definition. Talking, seeing each other, Netflix and chilling, all refer to dating among young adults. With advances in technology, online dating has lost much of its stigma. A survey by Pew Research Center found that online dating is more culturally acceptable than it was in the early millennium. I used Tinder, and I thought Tinder was something that it wasn't. I thought you were supposed to get on there, and if you slide to the right, they would respond. That wasn't the case. I haven't used any dating apps. I haven't ever felt the need to use one. I feel like if you are going to date somebody, you should meet them in person first. First impression is everything. I do think that we are um, leaning on these technologies to be able to, to mass communicate in a manner that we haven't used it before. As we spend more time on our mobile devices, dating apps are allowing people to find love and companionship. In a matter of seconds, you could be matched with people who you might be interested in with apps such as Tender, Match.com, or Plenty of Fish. Uh, yeah. I like to say maybe in the beginning stages of a relationship, if they got together through a dating app because they might have gotten comfortable talking to the other person through the app, so when they got face-to-face, -face, it was kind of maybe, maybe awkward. I think dating apps would definitely affect a relationship. Once you're in that relationship, I think you should do away with the app. 
there's not really a need for it anymore. You found who you want to be with. So I feel like dating apps can really affect a relationship. I mean, I, I, that's what I would think. Because I'll get so used to just their their text, not really their face and their facial expressions and all that, all of that stuff, their body language. I wouldn't have gotten used to it. So if we've been talking for a month just through an app and then we get together, it probably won't last because it wasn't, we didn't, I don't know. It's just pretty bad. I don't think that would work. Pew Research Center recorded one-third of dating app users have never actually gone on a date with someone they've met on these sites. But are these apps affecting the way we communicate in relationships? And then you may never even go out on a date at this point. And the relationship's over before you go to dinner with someone at, at this point. But I do think that the traditions that we've all had, that communication tradition has not necessarily changed, it's just shifted and it's just moved into a different medium of communication, but that need for constant contact that you even had, you know, 15 or 20 years ago before cell phones were, were mainstream, I think that that still exists and that constant want to be in touch with that person, I just think it's easier now to do that than it used to be. In some instances, that constant need for contact or relationship leads to online misrepresentation, or so-called catfishing. MTV produces an entire series that investigates online relationships. Were you thinking about marrying this guy? Yeah. Which reminds viewers of the old adage, buyers beware. And while the effects of online courting is still uncertain, one thing is clear. It, it's it's definitely made it more accessible and more acceptable. For Southeastern Times, I'm Brittany Robinson. The city of Slidell has given the green light to begin a $20 million capacity project funded by federal and state funds. With construction already underway, the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development see the project as a vital part of economic growth in St. Tammany Parish. Um, again, it's a capacity project. That means we're going to be allowing for more travelers on the road because they have a pretty dense population in the area. It's near four regional airports, many industries, including technology, energy, Construction. The DOTD is contracting the construction that is planned to add one additional lane to each side of the Interstate 12 highways, widening the interstate from a four-lane highway to a six-lane highway both ways. The interstate system expansion will provide the North Shore efficient travel for more than 85,000 commuters daily on I-12. A ton of uh, opportunities for St. Tammany Parish, both economic development-wise as well as connectivity-wise. Connectivity is the key factor of the expansion project. The widening will span 2.4 miles from North Shore and Airport Road exit to U.S. Highway 11. The project is only phase one of a larger expansion from Baton Rouge to Slidell. We'll be allowing for more travelers on the road because they have a pretty dense population in the area. While construction is underway, motorists should drive with caution in areas labeled construction zones. The capacity project should be completed by spring of 2016. For North Shore News, I'm Brittany Robinson. The majestic trees on the Mandeville Lakefront are again the focal point of controversy. Many residents are concerned that hammocks might be banned from the lakefront trees. I asked my constituents how they felt about it, because I'm a representative, and so I need to build a consensus for what they want because I'm their voice. Many people like the natural state of the park with, a lot of, with not a lot of amenities, just the trees and the grass and the water are beauty in and of itself. Some residents believe that hammocks have not damaged the live oaks, and therefore they aren't the root of the problem. The stem of the issue isn't hammocks themselves, but how to properly suspend hammocks on proper branches. When installing a hammock, you want to find a branch six inches in diameter or more. Um, you're going to want to tie off with a soft rope, no chains, uh, no twine. 
and just make sure you don't tie onto anything that's under six inches and make sure you have a nice clearance at the bottom. 57% of constituents don't mind the hammocks on the lakefront as long as the oak trees are not damaged. As of now, it seems as though the lakefront is hammock approved for summer season. Uh, attach uh, a wide strap uh, around a substantial branch or around the trunk part. Uh, really, the branch of the trunk part should be at least six inches or, or, or greater in size. Uh, that there's no way that that's going to have any effect at all structurally on the tree. Actually, these trees are structurally sound and they're very healthy. According to Dr. Guidry, the live oak trees in Mandeville are substantially free from harm. Now, he will happily retire to the trees and encourages residents to enjoy the lakefront in their correctly applied hammocks. For North Shore News, I'm Brittany Robinson.